Beep, 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 important update about foreskins. That's right, another foreskin update. This is your special 2020 presidential election foreskin update. Will Donald Trump give us our foreskins that we so deeply desire? Or will it be Joseph Biden, a man famous for not really talking about foreskins at all? Either way, I have a sinking suspicion that none of us are going to get our foreskins back no matter who wins. I think that our chances of breaking into the secret medical uh, storage facility wherein they keep all of our foreskins in alphabetical manila envelopes inside of office drawers, I think that time has passed. I think once Bernie Sanders... um, was no longer the nominee. I think that the chance for us to get our foreskins back kind of passed. But, you know, some people were hopeful. Some people said, well, you know, Joe Biden's record on foreskin restoration hasn't been perfect in the past. Uh, He's since learned his lesson. He's come around since the 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, and early 2010s. And he's since changed his mind on foreskin restoration. But... I don't know. It that'll that remains to be seen and he's got a lot to prove especially with his VP running mate Kamala Harris uh infamous for uh the confiscation of several hundreds of thousands of foreskins in the state of California where she was uh top cop of the state for a long time. So it'll it'll remain to be seen um but as of right now it looks like Joseph R. Biden has won the election. Um, At least that's most people are calling it for him. So we'll see. I mean, his foreskin record hasn't always been the best, but we'll see if he comes out on top and uh, does a 180 on us. Either way, that's your foreskin update for now. I personally am a little bit blackpilled on the foreskin thing, but that's just me. Anyways, today is uh, November 8th. 2020 and I'm looking at a Garfield comic by Jim Davis and this one is actually it's quite it's a bit of a longer one a lot of them are are a bit shorter especially a lot of the ones we do on here on uh, Garfanomics but this one's this one's a little bit longer it even has a a title panel it's got uh, Garfield kind of written out and 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 sketched on an etch-a-sketch sort of uh, contraption. It's a very cute cover. And then we have a panel with Odie just kind of standing bored. And then another panel where Odie goes, bark. And then uh, the next panel, Garfield comes out. He says, quiet, Odie. Then Odie gets a little angry and he goes, bark, bark. And then we got another panel. Garfield says, quiet. And I mean it. And then you see Odie, he's going absolute cuckoo bananas. He is waving his arms, he is screaming, he's angry, he's going bark, 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 bark. Then the last panel, we have John who says, I can't find any of my socks. And Garfield who says, let's just say they're otherwise employed at the moment. (laughs) So it's pretty funny. We can deduce from this that um, Garfield has silenced Odie and his horrendous barking by shoving socks into his mouth, um, John's socks. Uh, And that's quite funny. That's quite humorous. And it's kind of reminded me, it's bringing me back around. And it's bringing me back around to this election. I know. I said I was only going to discuss the four sins a little bit at the beginning. That's what I promised everybody on Twitter. I promised everybody everywhere. um, But I lied. I'm coming back to the 2020 election uh, between two uh, not exactly great foreskin candidates. And it's it's reminding me of I I think that at this time, I'm going to I'm going to kind of be a little real with you here. I think at this time, I am just so sick and tired of Trump shit. You know what I mean? I'm just, ugh. And it's not even like I'm sick of like just the the MAGA stuff, you know, from the MAGA people. Uh, I'm sick of that, obviously. That's very, it's very annoying because I travel a lot. 
And it's very annoying when you're driving around in uh, rural parts of the country. Um, and you just you always see these uh, Trump 2020 signs and everything everywhere, all over the goddamn place when you're driving through uh, poorer, rural areas. And um, so obviously I'm sick of that. But I'm also really, really sick of the Trump obsession from the other side as well. I'm sick of Democrats' obsession with him as well, as if he's some kind of um, crazy... I mean, he is in a way, he's very unique, but they act act as if he's some kind of uh, aberrant uh, force that's completely unique and uh, just worthy of nonstop um, talking about and the same lame jokes about, you know, how how much of a hypocrite he is and all this and that and talking about the dang Cheeto in the White House. And that's all very annoying to me as well. And I'm just kind of being real with a second and just saying I'm so glad it's over. Like, honestly, I'm just glad. I hope that all the we can everybody can just shut the fuck up about Donald Trump because that's all that's the name it, that's the only name I've been hearing nonstop constantly for like 4 years and I'm sick of it. I don't care. It's boring. We know he's bad. Duh. Oh, he said something stupid today? Oh, what? I thought he was a genius that only said No, of course he said something stupid today. He always says something stupid. Shut up. It's not funny. It's not a clever insight. Anyways, I, uh, I'm, I'm glad that a lot of that's going to be over. But this comic, that's what it reminded me. Just ugh, people nonstop barking, barking, talking just about this one person. Just America's just obsessed. I hate it. It sucks. But now that uh, Biden's kind of seems to have uh, clinched the, uh, the presidency, I think... I think I think a lot of that will drop off and maybe I can I can rest well again and not be annoyed by a bunch of nerds. Anyways. Something else that kind of was bothering me. I'm going to get a little ranty today. I haven't I haven't had like a good rant in a while. You know, I've kind of just been like working and I've kind of been like looking at I've been doing a lot of accounting because that's what I do. And I've just been kind of looking at investments. I want to say really quickly, because this is technically, it's not just a politics podcast. It's also an economics podcast and pretty heavily so. And I want to say that um, the market, the stock market is doing just fine. It's actually almost going to be at a a five-year high, (laughs) if you can believe it. I was going to have to work late because... They were worried that there was going to be crazy market volatility. And no, the market's doing just fine. And I I think there's a lesson to be taken from that, that it doesn't matter how many people in this country die of a, a pretty novel virus. It doesn't matter how many lives are lost, how many people are kicked out of their homes, how many people... How many more people are out on the street or how many more people are without health care or anything like that? Because we all know the, the the average life of the American person is just getting worse. It's getting worse and worse as time goes on. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't affect the stock market one single inch. So this is something I always like to bring back and I always like to talk about because you're always going to get these nerds from like the news and these dorks. Um, you know, these kind of weird, like, ANCAP people or whatever, uh, libertarians, and they're always talking about, like, oh, but the economy is doing so good. Or even just conservative people in general, when horrific things are happening and the the average, um, you know, spending money of the American family is going down and the average quality of life for American citizens is going down, And they will talk about, oh, well, the economy is doing so good. We have to keep doing all of this horrific shit because the economy is doing so well. The economy is almost at a five-year high. 
right now after over 200,000 American lives have been lost to a virus that could have been prevented to just annoying stuff. And I think that that's one thing to take away is that it doesn't matter. The economy, what you're really talking about when they say that they're talking about the stock market, right? They're talking about the Dow Jones index and things like that. And they're, they're equating that to the economy. And it's not just them. It's not just individual people. It's it's news sites, too. It's news organizations. And I think news organizations do this as well, but I think they do it much more cynically. I think they understand a lot of them, especially in economics news sources. They understand that the economy does not equal the stock market, but they pretend like it does because they have a, an alternative agenda, right? But that's what I'm saying is it doesn't matter how high the Dow Jones is doesn't matter how good stocks are doing. That has no bearing on the life of people and how good people are doing. Anyways, I want to bring that back around. Ugh. I'm so sick. I'm sorry. I'm just so sick of all of this. I'm so, so frustrated that I'm just never going to see my foreskin again. And that's where I'm at right now. I'm just never going to see my foreskin again. Anyways, I wanted to bring this back around. And I've said that, what, like 10 times now? But I do, because I'm going on tangents. I'm getting ranty. It's been a while. And I've got a lot to talk about. And one of the things that I wanted to talk about was an article that popped up uh, in my Twitter feed, unfortunately. And it is kind of related to what I was just talking about, about how cynical news sites are and how they very much well know the truth but what they're feeding you is just propaganda i mean let's be honest so this is what popped into my twitter feed it's an article from the new york times and i'm gonna tell you right now please never read the new york times ever especially after this so i saw a tweet across my page and it said something about uh, Bolivia because we all know at this time uh, Evo Morales he's returned to Bolivia he's kind of been embraced back and I saw this tweet from the New York Times that said Bolivia's former president Evo Morales returned to the country on Monday a year after his failed attempt to keep power tore the nation apart and sent him into exile. Whoever you are, if you're listening to this, never read the New York Times, ever. This is the most horrendous thing I've ever read. So obviously I read it because I was mad. And <laughs> so I looked into it. For those not, not aware, um, the reason why this sort of, this tweet was so disgusting is that uh, Bolivia, is one of the kind of one of the few last remaining um, socialist countries or countries that calls itself socialist anyway, and uh, it's a it's a small South American country and it, it is also notorious for having one of the largest. It has some of the largest lithium reserves in in, in you know maybe that's not the right word but lithium as a resource. It has a lot of lithium, folks. And it just, weirdly enough, in this one country, it has like almost the majority of the world's lithium. Now, there are issues with that. It, it's uh, it's not exactly, a lot of people say it's not the best quality of lithium and, oh, it's too expensive to extract it from, you know, the country's salt flats or whatever. Blah, 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 blah. But at the end of the day, um, the reason that the tweet was so disgusting is because the United States straight up uh, backed a military coup in that country um, and they you know they claim it's because election fraud or what about the no Evo was democratically elected as president and they tried to do a straight up military coup on on the country and against the uh, the socialist government and if you don't think it's because of the country's large lithium reserves or because a lot of our modern day 
items, our computers, our, our, you know, even just batteries for most things, especially even in cars, even in Tesla cars, lithium is super important for the batteries in those cars. It is essential to a modern sort of uh, uh, tech society. And you would be stupid to think that the U.S. just just did a military coup just because just because there was, uh, you know, they were naughty boys over in Bolivia, Bolivia. They didn't do voting right. No, don't be an idiot. Of course, it's, it's economical. The only reason that any capitalist country does anything is because of capitalism. It's because of money. We don't do anything without the consideration of money. We don't do anything if there's no, if there's no profit to gain. So anytime something like this happens, like if the U.S. packs a coup in Bolivia, you have to ask yourself, what is the economic gain? And it's pretty, quite obviously about lithium. They'll tell you, you know, you can go to some nerd rags like uh, Foreign Policy. I don't know if you've ever heard of that publication, but yeah, just go to Foreign Policy or sorry, foreignpolicy.com. Uh, it's something owned by the Slate Group, I think. And they'll say, uh, actually, it wasn't about lithium at all. But then they don't tell you what it was about, or they kind of like wane about, oh, uh, you know, democracy, America defends democracy around the world. And it's like, yeah, okay. No, it doesn't. That's not how money works. That's not how economy works. That's especially not how capitalism works. It's a profit-motivated society, so they're not going to do anything unless there's not a profit. So it's obviously about lithium, so don't give me that shit. Anyways, so it was just an incredibly offensive tweet to me. And let me read through because it's just, it's amazing. I, I'm straight up going to read this, or at least some of it. So first of all, this is by uh, a, a pair, apparently. Uh, it's written by uh, Maria Silvia Trigo and and. Anatoly Kermenev? I don't know. I don't know how to say that at all. Uh, let's do, actually, let's do a quick little search of these these people. Who, the, who are these jokers? Journalists based in Bolivia. Amazing. This is, you know, I would have expected nothing less. Anyways, let me go through this article and let me just explain why I was so annoyed with it. And so, you know, in my grief about my... You know, the loss of hope to ever regain my foreskin. It, it, this was just the last thing I needed to read. Um, here we go. Let's do it. Uh, Santa Cruz, Bolivia. Bolivia's maverick former president, Evo Morales, made a triumphant return to his homeland Monday, a year after his failed attempt to keep power tore the nation apart and sent him into exile. So let me explain. So where they say his failed attempt to keep power, this is the part where he won a democratic election because the people of Bolivia voted for him. And then where it says tore the nation apart and sent him into exile. This is the part where there were threats on his life and on the life of his family from the US-backed military coup that was invalidating the results of this democratic election uh, to the point where he felt safer to flee to another country uh, out of fear of his life. Mr. Morales, the country's longest serving leader, was greeted by brass bands and hundreds of cheering supporters as he walked across the border from Argentina on the dusty and frigid Andean Plateau accompanied by the neighboring country's president, Alberto Fernandez, and a retinue of close allies. But beyond the jubilant reception, Mr. Morales finds a wary nation anxious to move beyond the political turmoil unleashed by his divisive bid for a fourth presidential term and focused on overcoming a crippling pandemic and economic crisis. Again, where they say, move beyond the political turmoil unleashed by his divisive bid for presidential term, they're talking about how he um, fairly and democratically won an election. Um, and then the United States uh, tried to do a coup and uh, a violent one and subvert democracy uh, for economic profit. 
None of the national leaders of Mr. Morales' socialist political party, you always got to mention that they're socialists. That's, that's the spooky buzzword you have to mention so that everybody knows these are the bad guys. Which returned to power this month following a calm presidential election, came to greet their mentor at the border. Neither Bolivia's new president, Luis Arce, I don't know how to say that, nor the vice president, David Choquehuanca, I don't know how to say that either. I'm American. Give me a break. Both former ministers and Mr. Morales' governments mentioned him in their acceptance speeches on Sunday. Mr. Ayers, I'm going to call him Ayers, had made clear during the campaign that Mr. Morales would play no part in his government if he won, and went on to handily beat a field of right-leaning candidates who had historically opposed Mr. Morales. On his return to Bolivia, Mr. Morales echoed the promise, telling supporters that he would dedicate himself to labor activism where he began, he began his political career. Quote, I will share my experience in the union struggles because the fight continues, he said at the border crossing Monday. As long as capitalism exists, the people's fight will continue. I'm convinced of this. So this, this is really where the, the conflict of this is, right? And this is where you see um, American news outlets kind of demonizing uh, somebody who won an election um, and is trying to pretend like this coup never happened. Um, and it, it boils down to this. It boils down to economics, as all things do. Everything in politics is economics. You have to realize this. And it boils down to this. It, exactly what was just talked about. He stated, he promised his supporters here, that he would dedicate himself to labor activism. This is the issue here. The issue is not one of uh, a democracy or failure to be a democracy. The issue is socialist economy versus capitalist economy. That's what it is. The issue is privatization versus nationalization, really. Really and truly. And I'm not going to go on and read the rest of this dribble, uh, the rest of this crap, really. But I, I just wanted to kind of talk about it because, ugh, ugh, is the last thing I wanted to read. I got up in the morning, okay? I, I had a, a hangover from a long night of drinking, coming to the realization, coming, just trying to cope. With the fact that I'm never going to see my precious, squishy foreskin ever again. And I roll out of bed, as I do every morning, and I crawl over to the computer and pretend to work for an hour. And when actually I'm just checking Twitter. And I see this. Ugh. I see this. Oh, it just makes me angry. All right, so let's let's go down here. I'm going to read the closing thought because it's laughable. And I want to talk about two, uh, two themes that I picked up on. Here's a quote. Uh, ba, 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 ba. What citizens want now is to work. They want normalcy, said Mr. Silva, the political scientist. They don't want more political turmoil. Isn't that something? Well, and if we all we all know something about people, we know that people love to work, don't we? Oh, don't we love to work, folks? Don't we love it? We want to go back to normalcy. We just want to go back to brunch, baby. I want to pretend like this isn't happening. We want to get over this little political turmoil and get back to work, baby. Nonsense. This is nonsense. His entire article is, is nonsense. It's propaganda. And I just, you think they would be subtle about it, but they're just not anymore. It just, oh, ugh. what am I going to do now? No hope. No foreskin. Having to read this garbage. 
having to translate it. Having to translate it to normal people. My brain, it can't survive. I need more beer. I need more tequila to keep going. But you know what? I'm glad we had this talk. This was a good vent. I got a lot of things off of my chest, and this is way better and cheaper than therapy. So thank you for listening. As always, this has been the best unofficial official Garfonomics-based economics and politics podcast, Garfonomics. I have been your host, and thank you for sitting with me today. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. Anyways, that's been Garfonomics. Oh, by the way, I want to talk about, um, I want to thank the person on Patreon who actually decided to spend money on this. Uh, I used that money very wisely. I bought a, back, a pack of rice chips, of spicy rice chips, and I just want you to know that's where that money went, and I want you to be happy. I want you to be happy that that's where I spent your $3. Um Without those rice chips, I could not do this research. I would not have the energy to read this garbage. I just, I wouldn't be able to do it. So thank you. Uh, If anybody else would like to support uh, our Garfield-based research, um, you can actually go find the Patreon. Just look up Garfonomics on Patreon. We have, uh, there, there's no bonus content or anything like that. I don't really believe in that kind of stuff. I don't think that you should have to pay money to get like extra episodes and things like that. So you don't get any, anything like that. <clears throat> you don't get any like little trinkets or, or whatever, you know, crap to put around your house or wear or whatever. Um, at least not yet. I mean, maybe I might do like t-shirts or something. Cause I think that'd be like a funny bit, but like. There's nothing like that. So it's just one tier. It's the lowest tier it would let me choose um, when I set it up, which is the $3 uh, tier. And that is basically just uh, money. Like if you like the idea of a uh, Garfield-based economics and politics podcast, um, then you can you can just uh, throw like $3 my way on the Patreon. Um I basically just use it as like support, like like moral support. Um, and I just spend the money on snacks to be real with you. And, uh, but it's a nice gesture. And if you want to do it, um, you know, power to you. And like, that would be very nice and it would make me feel good. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to talk about. I know we're already kind of running pretty long, but it's been a while since I've done one of these. I haven't had a really long lunch break in a while. For new listeners, I do these on my lunch break. Um, yeah, I think that's all I got. See ya.